how did you get into photography? I did photography at school as a, as a subject or, or as a major in art. So I've always been interested in photography and then being in an environment that lends itself to... I, I'm amazed there's a lot of guides don't take photographs. I can't understand why. I mean, you, you're right there, you see incredible stuff on a daily basis. And so I, I came into safaris loving photography and then built up a pretty cool photographic equipment setup. And every day it's like, let's go and get a cool photo. Let's go see what we can photograph today. And you see cool stuff, really amazing, unique stuff, stuff that that people just don't get to see unless you're watching BBC or you're, you know, you're watching some National documentary, Geographic. National Geographic, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So we're in it, like you're right there, so you might as well. And I just so happen to enjoy that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I also did a little bit of photography thing at school. Yeah. But they didn't really teach you much with proper cameras. They only taught us about editing photos on your phone. Yeah. You know, most people nowadays use phones. Look. Depends what you're doing it for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And some of these phones are insanely good, eh? Samsung's had one of the best cameras. Yeah, yeah, Samsung. I think Sony still has quite a good camera, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so does but, Nokia. Yeah, a lot of them do, eh? And so, maybe if now going to doing photography at school now, we, we used to go into the dark room. I don't know if you even know. If, if, Doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, so basically, the old, old version of photography is you take the shot, and it would burn the image on a slide. So this, uh, have you seen slide film? Yeah. It's like a plastic reel, right? If you hold it up to the light, you can see the shot that was taken. But now you need to get that shot onto paper. And it used to, used to go into a dark room, like a, a room with no lights, no nothing. The, the only light you could have was a red bulb shining because that wouldn't burn into the paper. Okay. Yeah, and then you, you have these trays with chemicals and you, you, you have the, the paper that you, you put it, the paper into these chemicals. You, there's a shot that puts the photograph from that slide onto the paper. Then you put it into another bowl of chemical and it would slowly bring out the color or in this case black and white. And that's how you print it and depending on how long you left it in the chemical, how much your chemical mix was as to the, the light, the color contrast between black and white and shadows. And you know, like now when you're fiddling on your phone, you've got all of that. You've got shadows, you've got contrast. It's all there for you. It's all there. But this was all done. You should Google it as well, like a dark room. Uh, developing photographs in a dark room. You'll be like, what the hell is that? I mean, you get one photograph out of 60 shots, you're doing well. Yeah. yeah. So we did that at school, eh? Sounds cool. Yeah, and then digital came along, and that obviously changed the game a lot. Yeah, I remember when I first started, we used to have film. Film, so you yeah. load your, your camera with film, and you, the most exposures you could have is 36 shots, right? So I would go and work for six weeks at a time. I could only afford six rolls of 36. So I'd shoot 36 shots in a whole week. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you go develop. home and get them developed and it's quite exciting. But I mean, now if you've got, I don't even know if you, you can get like a memory stick, maybe like a one gig or something like that. But 36 shots is nothing. It's impossible. But anyway, that's how it was. Eh? No. I have a friend who uses a film camera. Look, this, it's still arguably, in general, better quality if you're using high quality slide yeah. depends on what you're using then again you get some crazy like the hustle black I don't know if you've heard of it, it's high high level digital camera mm -hmm. but then you need, you, know, you need some serious cash eh, to buy that thing <laughs> I get the point of still using a film camera because you get a unique image mm. or well, old video cameras I don't get the point because no, still some skate filmers uh, use the Sony VX Yes. 100 I think because yeah. that was like the first camera that was actually very good for, for filming skateboarding because it had the handle and everything yes. and you could get like a fisheye lens which was the best for skating yeah 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 but nowadays when they use that I don't get the point because the quality is bad yeah. and also you can also you can lose your image very quickly like if someone did a hard trick and you can film it if something messes up uh, ah yeah. yeah I think I, actually I watched this the making of one of the skate movies. I love watching Red Bull TV and there's lots of skate movies on there. Yeah. I don't know if you've watched that. 
but it's often the making of and these oaks were filming a, a good tricky a tricky scene and they lost it they like you know we were talking about taking takes yeah and they took like 15 takes or whatever it was and eventually they got it but there was something wrong with the setting on the guy's camera <laughs> that happens to me before <laughs> yeah. 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 escape is never one try no none of those movies are when you look at them how they're made when you see them for the first time, you go, wow, they make it look so easy. Behind the scenes, it's pretty hardcore. Uh, yeah.